Hi guys! Hello! Oh, we made it! A bit of a, an internet thing. It went out. It was doing press this morning and then it, the internet went out here. Oh, <laughs> no worries. So, yeah, I was I like, uh, the next, um, I'm working on a project in upstate New York. And so we are uh, very rural up here. Anything we need, uh, the, the person who's an, an executive producer on the project basically become transportation because we're so rural. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, that's fun. It'll make yeah. for a great set experience. It is. It's, uh, it definitely sets the tone up here and it, we can be very focused. Um, yeah. Yeah, we start shooting Monday, so we're just in prep right now. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to talk about Escape Room 2, which is mm. your latest movie that's coming out next week. Um, so can you give us a little background about your character? Because I know she wasn't in the first one. Mm -hmm. So, like, how does she tie in with the story? So this movie is called Tournament of Champions, where there is a winner that was presumably just not filmed on screen, and Ben and Zoe's story was. Mm -hmm. where uh, we've all won our own rooms and now we are unfortunately put back in a position against our will. Um, I think the first one, it's pretty much understood that all of us had a financial incentive to want to join the room. But this one, uh, we, are, we are surprised by being stuck in a Animino's escape escape room. We were not prepared for it. And um, I think everyone has a different way of solving the puzzles. Um, and we all are leaders to a certain extent because we won our, our rooms. And so there's a bit of a clash in strategy of how to solve the rooms um, in, this, in this film. But the stakes are, are higher because we, uh, we were here involuntarily this time and yeah. we were before. So that's, that's where this movie picks up. And how did you get involved in this? Had you seen the first one before? No, I hadn't seen it before. And when I, in preparation for this audition, um, I don't usually watch scary movies because I actually get scared. Um, but I uh, was really happy that I got it was a really fun movie. I usually love, I'm a gamer, I like board games and game nights. Yes. I love escape rooms. So uh, it was really quite a pleasure to watch the first one. I thought it felt very interactive with the audience. And I really did feel like I was on like a, a ride at Universal, so to speak. So it was a lot more fun than your average horror movie, which I was really looking forward to when I, when I actually got hired on this movie to be part of that. It's funny that you say that you don't like scary movies when you, like, have been a part of multiple horror, I like, know, Butcher's Block, like, mm -hmm. and No is. Escape, Now Escape Room. Like, what do you feel, like, drawn to those roles, or they just happen to, like, land in your lap? I think, you know, I started my career on this HBO dark comedy show that just, we shot our first season, and then they just didn't air it. So I do yeah. think it's, it's a testament to sort of which category you do fall into as an actor um but i've been happy with the choices in the sense that i think content is king despite the genre of the movie and i love working on channel zero um i've learned a lot about schizophrenia which is an umbrella for many types of of conditions underneath that sort of term um so working on channel zero i got to research that quite a bit i tested for a few projects before on schizophrenia, so the fact that I actually got to do something with, uh, in this case, it was more of a manic disorder with um, mm -hmm. schizophrenia. Um, I was eager to sort of put my research to the test. Um, and something like Lore, that was a real story, that their yeah. Salem witch trial, so to speak, wasn't in the 1600s, it was in the 1900s, um, which, you know, to have an honor killing in Ireland that recent, so to speak, is uh, it's quite sad. And so, I've had a different approach with, with every film I, or, or every project. I haven't, even though I guess they all are in horror, I don't, I don't feel like, um, I, I, you don't approach it that way as far as preparing yeah. for you. Yeah. Cool. And then, so this one came out after No Escape, of course, which is also an escape room. So have you yourself been to an escape room or are you just like, no, absolutely not now after being a part of two horrifying escape rooms? That's true. <laughs> uh, different kind of escape rooms. Um, <laughs> I did have one experience in Vienna, Austria that was interesting because it was 108 degrees and there's no AC in a country like that. It was just having a heat wave. And my best friend, we had brought our mothers to Vienna and they were you know, two women in their 60s in 108 degree weather. And they wouldn't let us out of this massive building. And, 
Vienna is actually where they started the escape room. So I was excited because I oh, am wow. an escape room fan that I wanted to go to one of the first escape rooms ever built, which this was one of them. And that was probably the most escape room feeling in terms of this particular movie I've ever felt in an escape room. Yeah. Every other escape room, the themes are quite fun and um, the gadgets are fun. I mean, I think my favorite was we were looking for a message and you have to pour this liquid down a pipe sink that, you know, it drinks and then the message came up through the pipe. So, I mean, I, I just think like, I'm such a kid when it comes to those, those, uh, yeah. those and so I think using your brain, it's, it's, teamwork and it has a game mentality all of the fun gadgets you to play with that's i think just a culmination of why i like escape room so much just the problem solving like aspect yeah. yeah that's fun and um being a part of the horror fandom i would say now is very similar to like i would maybe what you experienced when you were on Teen Wolf. So is there similarities between the fandoms? Do you find that like the fans overlap because it was supernatural, but now it's horror? How do you? I don't know if I, if there's an overlap. I mean, I've seen maybe a little bit, but um, you know, I've, I've lived through the movie. Like I, I have my experience in the movie, but until it really comes out, I probably won't really know how big of an overlap. I've seen a little bit um, mm -hmm. saying that they love both, Teen Wolf and the Escape franchise. So we'll see what happens. Um, it, you know, how, how much overlap there is. If you had to sum up Escape Room in a word without spoiling anything, how would you, what would the word be? I'm going to have to steal it from Logan Miller and say it's a hot, high octane thriller because it really is. I mean, mm -hmm. I would say, you know, I love that this Escape, this particular movie is, yes, I guess it could be considered a horror genre movie. Um, but I also think it's a really fun family movie in the sense that a lot of horrors these days are hypersexualized or there's just a mm -hmm. lot of inappropriate content or it's incredibly gory. These tend to uh, leave more to the imagination and there is that interactive aspect that the audience feels like they're solving an escape room with these actors, with these people on screen. So for, from that perspective, it's quite a unique way to tell a movie. Um, when the audience feels like they're a part of it. Uh, so that's yeah. why I feel like it's much more appropriate for all ages than, than maybe your average horror movie. And although it is appropriate for like family friendly, like it is intense, I'm assuming on set when you're in those escape rooms and like running for your life, and you have yeah. to emerge yourself into that. Um, do you find it more rewarding in the end when you watch it back, knowing what you went through, like the strenuous and emotional scenes? Uh, I would say that you're in that headspace for so long for, uh, you know, three, three and a half months that in between takes, it's pretty chill. Um, I remember the, okay. the boys loved uh, a bunch of different like comedic YouTube channels um, and different stand-ups. And so in between takes, you're watching stand-up comedians. Um, <laughs> So it wasn't, it wasn't super intense uh, as far as like the feeling on set. Um, I perhaps maybe learned that from Teen Wolf that it's, you know, until action, it's, it's pretty chill. Um, and yeah, I, I, uh, I would say the hardest part for me was, I actually love the sand room. I think that a lot of people think that's the hardest stunt for me. Um, mm -hmm. It was the most fun. Maybe it's a masochistic part of my personality, but um yeah, I would say um, that's obviously in the trailer, but uh, I'm going to say, I don't want to give it away, but um, the bank was the hardest for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you did mention that, like, it is very similar to Teen Wolf, and are all sets like that? I mean, because when you were on that show, you had some crazy storylines, especially when, like, Lydia's in Eichenhaus and, like, just getting into that headspace, but is it easy to, easier when you're able to take yourself out of that when you're the cameras aren't rolling yeah I mean I'm I'm pretty chill between takes um I mean I think it probably depends on the circumstance of the movie but um mm -hmm. you know like I said I was raised on on the Team Wolf set where we were in conditions that were really cold and wet and most often naked and nocturnal and you know so I think you just have to make the best of a situation and and you don't complain and you just you're really grateful to be working and you're having a lot of fun and 
So to me, you know, despite the, the content being really intense, um, you yeah, know, between takes, it's pretty chill. <laughs> and would you say that that's like one of the best lessons that you learned being on that show for so long? I would say the best lesson, yeah, we definitely had, a, had really good training um, for this business, mm -hmm. but we're really ready for anything. Um, I also just take away such great memories on that set. Um, you know, it's, it's, it becomes a part of your life at that point. It's your part of your identity. It's part of the way you were raised. And so um, my biggest takeaway from Team Wolf is probably that memory um, versus like learning anything particular. I'm just more gracious that I had the opportunity to, to experience something like that, to do a hundred episodes of television as one person. Um, and then have, you know, my, some of my best friends today are Team Wolf people. And so I don't think of them as Team Wolf people. They're just like a part of my life. Yeah, I met you on this job. It's like, that's my best friend. So um, the sort of blurred lines between a job and, and what I really consider, you know, a part of me was, it's one with Team Wolf. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Great. Um, yeah. We're gonna go into some fan questions. Okay. Um, how long did it take to film Escape Room? Yeah, we started in um, October and then we ended uh, late January. So about four months, three, four months. Yeah. So was this happening during quarantine? No. So we oh, it was right before we, we started October 19. I got home okay. almost like February 2020. Had four weeks uh, not being in an escape room. Then I yeah. got another global escape room that we all <laughs> had to participate in. Um, so yeah, I had friends, like my best friend, I, I hadn't seen obviously since I left for Cape Town. And when I got home, you know, you're, you're unpacking, you're, you're trying to yeah. work things and get back into your life in Los Angeles. And before I knew it, we were in another pandemic or not another, but another type of isolation that, um, mm -hmm. I went, you know, a year and a half without seeing my best friend, um, because I was filming escape room right up until the pandemic. Yeah. Um, it was like another four months of just not seeing family and friends. I thought that was going to be the, the separation, but that was just the mm -hmm. beginning for me. So if anything, it was a longer quarantine um, because I was filming away from my family in Cape Town. Yeah. That's wild that you yeah, came right bizarre. before. Yeah. We, it was, it was kind of a, a Coke bottle situation to go and go right into another Coke bottle situation that we obviously weren't anticipating. So um, that was bizarre to film right into that yeah but we were grateful to wrap we were grateful to wrap out mm -hmm. we were hearing about coronavirus and you know we were flying back and forth from cape town to los angeles so that's quite a commute as it is being on a lot of planes and so i'm very grateful that i didn't i you know no one in the cast caught anything traveling back and forth because we mm -hmm. easily could have at that point yeah And then somebody asked, was it scary for you to film those scenes? I mean, I know you said that it's easy. To yeah, work. no, it's not scary. <laughs> not for me. I mean, I'm for it all. Like, I love, I'm a set junkie. So when I walk onto those, those sets, that production design is just awe-inspiring. I mean, everything's mm -hmm. practical. We're shooting these things in sequence. Um, it's a different wow. style of acting because you get days off. You're not in every, every scene all the time. These are group mm -hmm. scenes on mass, big masters all the time. Uh, and then we shoot it from every angle you could, I mean, imaginable. You see it for 20 minutes on film or maybe 15 minutes of film. We're shooting that for two, three weeks just for one room. So it's, uh, I would say the bank was definitely the trickiest for me because of the stunt that I'm a short person and I have to get up on something that's very tall, but I'm not allowed to use my hands. And so logistically that was, and the marble floor was underneath and I had very slick shoes and I did slip once uh -huh. where thank God I did land on my feet after I slipped out from underneath something and didn't land on the marble floor with my head bashed open. That would have been bad. So um, oh, no. <laughs> the easiest stunt in the movie for me is ironically my hardest and vice versa. Probably the hardest looking stunt was when I was having the most fun and had to pretend I was being tortured. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. That's interesting. And did you have like stunt training before you even started filming or it was just like all in, you we do did, what you want? We did do some rehearsals. Want. We had, we had about three, two to three weeks of makeup tests and rehearsals for something at, 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 you know, at, the, at the, the scale, so to speak. 
Um, mm -hmm. So we had that. And then, you know, I just previous stunt ex experience on other jobs. But yeah, we did, we did get rigged up. And uh, if you're a part of the stunt or not, there were some types of stunts that multiple people were taking, were, were practicing. They had us come in for, even if we weren't doing that stunt in particular, um, we, we still got to sort of like try it out. I don't know why that was the case, but, but we all did stunt training for stunts we weren't even doing. Oh, wow. So mm -hmm. you always knew what was going on, even if you weren't in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they, the, the safety precautions were pretty, were pretty thorough there. Um, what character that you've previously portrayed would you want to help your character in Escape Room? That's a good question. Probably Lydia. Um, definitely. I feel like she'd be great at Escape Rooms. <laughs> yeah, she would be like laughing in the face of Minos. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. And then she could use her banshee powers when needed. That's right. <laughs> totally. <laughs> and then everyone is asking your favorite scene. Oh, do you miss Team away. We just did a couple of days of press um, where I think they're not releasing them till later. So I'm like, I have to make sure I don't give any bloopers away. I mean, not bloopers, but uh, spoilers. Spoilers. Yeah. I know. I'm like. Day. Don't give any bloopers away. Uh, don't, I guess I don't want to give those away either. But, but yeah. Um, there were a couple of difficult rooms, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard to talk about the rooms when you can't. Yeah. Do you have an idea of, like, if you were in charge of an escape room now that you've been a part of two, do you have any escape room ideas in your head that you would maybe want to try out? Well, I joke that, that you know, being a, being a pretty um, staunch millennial, I'm going to, my escape room would be stuck in TikTok. And I have to, like, TikTok my way out. Uh, yeah, that would be tough for me. That is a dangerous hole to end in because... Mm -hmm. You're just on there for hours, and then you're like, oh, it's time for bed. Yeah. Like, I yeah. did not plan on doing this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so for me, it would be, like, escape room, TikTok, or um, trying to think. I don't like running. I, have to, I, I run to, to stay healthy and help mm -hmm. out my heart. But, um, yeah, like, a continuous treadmill would be really pretty torturous for me, too. <laughs> Never or ending. One big hill I have to climb. Yeah. My and then uh, someone asked during quarantine shutdown, were you watching anything? TV shows, movies, rewatches, or anything new? Yeah. Um, the biggest thing I watched that I, or the thing I enjoyed the most was a show called Devs on Hulu. Loved Devs. Mm -hmm. And then a show called Dave. I love Dave too. Oh, yeah, a good one. Dickie. Um, good. And then uh, what are your aspirations when it comes to your acting career? I love nonfiction. And so I would love to produce nonfiction projects. Um, you know, whether that's an article or a book, um, a YouTube channel, you know, I would love to, to, to develop stuff that either is um, just stories you haven't really seen before. Um, whether that be a biography or um, a bigger scale story, uh, like history, you know, time in history. Um, Did that yeah, influence love... you to start your YouTube channel? Because I know you started your YouTube channel when you revamped your van over. Yeah, I was that in quarantine? Channel. Pardon? Was that in quarantine? Like when you did? Yeah, I did. All yeah, those... I built my van during quarantine. Um, I had looked at build since. 17 probably I'd looked at hundreds mm -hmm. of builds and I was lucky enough to travel uh quite a bit with Team Wolf but I didn't really get to be in nature that much in our in our yeah. business and um in between auditions and in between jobs I wanted a place to escape to and I I love national parks I love the outdoors I like rock climbing um I love skiing I'm a huge ski I, I, I really love skiing I want to get better mm -hmm. big mountain skiing is like a big goal of mine so um that was a great way to do that was was through the van and um and I was just down for an adventure and 
and uh, it, it didn't wean off from year to year. So I was like, okay, yeah. I'm going to build a band. And uh, yeah, it's, that's what I did during quarantine. That's fun. Yeah. I mean, everybody has a little hobby, but yeah, I wish yeah, I, I would have, you know, revamped a band. Well, I built the band from scratch. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, it was just a shell um, when we bought it, when I bought it. Um, and so, yeah, I started the YouTube channel just because I learned so much through other people's builds. Either for, mm -hmm. it was just entertaining, but it, again, you'd learn a lot as well. Um, some channels more than others, you might learn more, some might be more entertaining, but you, yeah. even just if it wasn't even a building um, type of education, it was a living kind of education of how do you work a composting toilet or how does, you know, mm -hmm. rudimentary plumbing work? How does advanced plumbing work? How does, you know, what are sort of the tips and tricks of, of staying overnight in cities and vans? I mean, there's a lot you can learn on, I call it YouTube University. I mean, I think everyone does. Um, so, yeah. yeah, so that's, I started my channel just to sort of like pass it forward. And um, it was a new way to connect to fans that wanted to see a different part of my life. That was another mm -hmm. reason why I started it. Um, yeah, it was just a, why not, why not bring people along for the ride? Yeah. And is that something that you would want to do in the future, like with acting? Uh, I know you're focused on acting, but like producing in the future, maybe yeah, projects that you are involved in. Producing features is something I'm primarily interested in. And then as far as YouTube channels, I really, I give it up to vloggers, man. I am, yeah. people think maybe there's a bunch of overlap. There is not overlap between the, mm -hmm. the film industry and vlogging. Um, there's a camera involved in both. That's about it. Um, I am, I am. It's interesting to see where your comfortability lies, and I'm so comfortable on sets and in characters and in scripts, um, and hopefully producing, you know, scripted and unscripted content mm -hmm. um, through documentaries or features. But YouTube is a different beast, and I don't know if I enjoy vlogging. Um, it's something I have to get used to. I love yeah. that there was a task at hand with the build because I really did want to pay it forward. I really did think that was interesting to watch other people's builds. So maybe someone would learn from mine. And again, yeah. fans that only know me as an actor, if they wanted that material, it was there. Um, but now that there's not like a task, so to speak, or like a centerpiece, yeah. it's, it's v very difficult for me. And, and I've been very grateful that I've been mostly employed this year. So it's, mm -hmm. it's hard to find time to get away in the van. Um, if it's not, you know, for just two days and, if yeah. you say you can YouTube anything, you can film anything yeah. to put on YouTube. But I think, um, albeit some of these bloggers' day to day life is very interesting. I do think it helps when there's two people involved. Um, although I've seen some great solo channels. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm still sort of figuring that out if that's something I want to do or not. But um, regardless, I'll be will hopefully be traveling in the van more in the next year, depending on what's work. Yeah, I've, I'm a bit of a weird mm -hmm. scenario because I. I don't YouTube for a living. Um, mm -hmm. so, yeah. So right now, what is your next project? I know you said you're on set, but does something yeah, else come out before? Right now that I am um, producing as well as, as acting in, and it's been uh, a learning curve to just learn how producing works and um, mm -hmm. everyone's different roles. And it's a really collaborative process. I'm a huge fan of the, uh, the script. <laughs> A man named Lawrence Vanicelli wrote the script, and I was lucky enough to find it perhaps first that, mm -hmm. um, you know, no one else had been attached uh, as of that time. At that time, mm -hmm. so I got, I got I got to hop on board, and it's been probably the biggest character study. Um, having a this much, I came on in April, so I've had a few months to think about mm -hmm. how I want to play this role, and um, it is about a mushroom trip. <laughs> And it's over the course of a weekend. And uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's a relationship movie. And um, I'm acting with a, a guy named Cal, Kyle Gallner, incredibly talented beast of an actor. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's just like two people in a house kind of sparring at it. And um, they, uh, they enter as boyfriend, girlfriend. And then over the weekend to this mushroom trip, um, we're dealing with his mother's death and his girlfriend starts to act more and more and more like his mother and dress like his mother. And oh, yeah. um, a lot of self-discovery comes out of this exercise of, is she doing this on purpose or not? 
Yeah. Oh, wow. It's so, a fun movie, bizarre movie. At the base, though, it's about relationships. I mean, right? At I would say it's core. like, you know, yeah, it's a reflection of how we're raised and mm -hmm. um, the influence that our parents have on us. How deep does that go? And where do we, as adults, decide to make different choices? Um, of how we communicate with our partners and how we choose to live our lives and the goals we have and how we self-identity, you know, where does, where does that, where's the line of what your parents instilled in you and what you've decided to have for yourself. Um, so, you know, I come from a psychologist family and my mom is a very, um, you know, she's a prominent psychologist that sort of hones in these sort of theories in my head growing up. Mm -hmm. So in this relationship, I'm like, talk everything out, let's get everything out, let's do these exercises and he doesn't really want to do that. Um, it's not how he operates. And uh, yeah, through the course of week, the weekend, trying to accept his mother's death and his mother's health as we're cleaning it out, debating, do we sell it or um, they're a disengaged couple? Do we start our own family here? Um, it's just a matter of uh, the, the girlfriend starts acting like his mother and is it on purpose or not? Is it an exercise? And what does he learn from it? Yeah. And why did the girlfriend do it? Yeah. But it's, in the in the like I said, the over the weekend of this mushroom trip. So it's it's a fun script. It's a weird, weird, weird dark script. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, it's an aspect of horror, but I would say it's 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 a relationship movie. Yeah, it's art. Awesome. And lastly, I'm gonna wrap it up really fast. But if you, what would you want that your fans or audience members to take away from seeing Escape Room Two? Just to have fun. I mean, I think, you know, we're all looking to a no pun intended escape out of the last year. And, yeah. you know, for some, this might be the first movie back. Um, you know, you might have seen 10 movies by now and, and you're just excited by the franchise. Um, but I, uh, I hope they just feel like they're part of the ride and it's, and they feel like they're in the rooms with us because that's a unique experience to this movie that you don't get in other movies. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I have uh, also a movie coming out in August 16th called American Boogeyman that is about Ted Bundy, um, but it's about the law enforcement that caught Ted Bundy. And I play a woman named Kathleen McChesney that uh, was based, Clarice was based off of. Mm -hmm. She was one of the first to sort of psychologically profile serial killers. So now she's heading up the FBI and started as the Seattle Police Department and now is running the FBI in, in Los Angeles. So honored to play her and um, the work that she did and has influenced in catching other people that yeah. you know, have gone on to mass destruction and, and, and mm -hmm. strategies in which to kind of catch those kind of people. So um, that'll come out August 16th. Great, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to yeah. us today. And I'm looking course, forward to seeing the room too. For, everything just like powered down and was like, <laughs> So like straight out of a movie in the middle of an interview but it wasn't a problem for between yeah. i mean that's kind of scary when you're promoting escape room too and the previews are literally you want to train and everything just shutting down so True. i would be like i mean we're is rural it? upstate new york and, and everything just shut down i was like yeah yes. of course this is happening during an escape room <laughs> <laughs> of course thank you so much Hey, y'all.